So let's go ahead and, 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 and get started. So with that being said, I was going to show you all some screens. Now, we only had the four people here, including myself uh, at the moment. So originally, I was going to ask, you know, what, you know, where are you located and how did you hear about us? Now, I know Frank has known me since day one. And I know he's in Raleigh. Tori, I met last week. And she's, you know, so I know she's in Raleigh as well. We know that Jennifer is in Dallas, Texas. So, uh, uh, J Jennifer, how did you hear about us? Was it on Meetup? Was it on LinkedIn or some other website? It was on Meetup. On Meetup. It was on Meetup. Okay, I've just got. I've got to get my my LinkedIn, Facebook, and all those other ones uh, actually doing uh, having better turnout. So, okay, thank you. So, if y'all have not joined uh, the lot the the uh, the Meetup, it's called the Small Business Owners of Meetup. You can uh, very easily join us. And it is it is a free event. You can just go to meetup.com uh, forward slash small dash business dash owners. Now it, it has changed, Frank. This will only affect Frank. This has changed from what was originally called the Raleigh Durham uh, small business owners. But the thing is, I I, I wanted to reach out further to people like say Jennifer in Dallas, where uh, the, if you don't live in Raleigh, that you can still uh, go ahead and join. So I did take the Raleigh part out. And this is only applies to Frank. I don't. I no longer have the RDU dash small business owners. So, so I was I was able to shorten it to to, to this one. So definitely, um, you can uh, very easily uh, just go here and join us, and then you'll be notified of future events. Now, just so that you guys are aware, uh, how I'm doing this. This is our this is our uh, training. We were, I've decided as of last week to make this a weekly training. So we're going to be doing this every Tuesday at three o'clock Eastern. That's also 12 o'clock Pacific. And then for people in Dallas, which I think you're in the central time zone, then that would be at two o'clock East, uh, two o'clock central. And let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. So how I'm basically breaking it down is on the first Tuesday of every month, we're going to be talking about general business concepts, even though I just realized I misspelled the word general. The second Tuesday of the month, we're going to be talking about uh, WordPress and SEO because WordPress is such a huge animal and WordPress for me personally is my preferred uh, website. So that's going to be the, the second Tuesday of the month. So therefore I'm going to be talking about uh, WordPress and SEO because WordPress has so many features. Uh, on the third Tuesday of the month, we're going to be talking about software and CRMs. So like uh, last week when we talked about uh, Canva, uh, that was kind of uh, that was kind of either a software or, or social media. Social media is going to be on the fourth Tuesday of the month, and we're going to be talking about things like uh, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, uh, how to use social media, uh, creating newsletters on your LinkedIn account, or so a whole, a whole bunch of social media uh, uh, type things. And then on the fifth Tuesday of the month, and that rarely happens, but when it does, like today is the fifth Tuesday of the month. I'm going to have we're going to have a, a bonus topic or a or a guest speaker, so that way we can actually cover a, additional things that may not fall into one of these other four categories. And then also for everybody that attends these uh, this event, this is one of the ones you may want to do a screenshot of. I do give a thirty minute complimentary discovery session, so we could talk about your business. So this is good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat as well, in case you do not uh, have. Um, the the ability to do a screenshot, so you can schedule that at any time. That links directly to my Google Calendar, and then you can just pick a, a time and place uh, where you can um, to do your discovery session. Now, if you attend more than one event, that's perfectly okay because you will have you. I will do another discovery session if you need to at that time as well. So that this is designed so that you guys can, uh, you know, figure out more about your business. Now, this is my first time announcing this, but I am also putting together what I'm calling the Business Kickstarter Virtual Workshop. That's a full one-day event. It's going to be here on Zoom as well to accommodate all the time zones. It's going to be from 11 on Saturday, July the 1st, and it's going to be from 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night Eastern time with maybe like a 45 minutes to an hour lunch as well, which also equates to 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 p.m. Pacific. So for uh, Jennifer that's in the that's in Dallas, that's going to be, uh, was it, uh, 10 a.m. to 6. So uh, I am trying to account uh, for all time zones. 
so that's all that I have as far as the slides go. We've already talked about if you need to do a screenshot, hit Command Shift Three if you have a Mac, if you're on a, um, a Mac computer, and if you're on a PC, you can use this thing called the Snipping Tool, and uh, that way you can do a screenshot. Are there any questions before we get started? I know that was a kind of lengthy introduction. Now, let me ask uh, uh, y'all this. Uh, you can either uh, put it in the chat or go ahead and, and say something out loud. How many people in here has actually has experience uh, speaking from stage? Or what, or better yet, what is your experience uh, from uh, public speaking? You have no, ex you can put this in the chat or let me know, there's no, uh, no experience, some, or that you are a, a professional. Once or twice in small groups, okay. Tori says, uh, some public speaking in college and during work meetings, fantastic. And Frank says, provided uh, presentations in corporate uh, in corporate settings. Okay, so so you guys have some experience in being in front of people around your peers or, or coworkers at least. Okay. What I found, you know, when I was putting together this uh, for, the, uh, for this talk, I found that 75% of the population has a fear of public speaking. Maybe you guys heard this before. Uh, there's more people that are afraid of public speaking than uh, they're more afraid of public speaking uh, speaking than death. And I've also researched that, that they're actually they're more afraid of public speaking than death, spiders, and heights. Like, so you know, those are like some of the biggest fears. And still, public speaking is one of the biggest fears that people have. And I'm gonna admit that when I first got started, because I did some college speak, uh, I took a public speaking class when I was in college back in the uh, early '90s, and I, you know, I was petrified as well. The main reason that that, that people uh, fear public speaking, for the most part, is they're 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 had a fear of rejection. OK, now, if you think about this, if you are, have the fear of rejection, it's, and it goes back to even your Neanderthal days, because if you were rejected by the group, that mean, meant that you were going to be by yourself. And that could mean that you could starve to death. You could be eaten by uh, predators. So that that is a core feeling that people have. And that and that's one of the biggest things you that you will need to overcome when you're going to become a public speaker is getting past that fear of rejection or at least start uh, being okay with being that way and then just building your confidence by doing this thing over and over again. Now, one of the things I do or I am going to be sharing with you on our website. I do have a blog on the OptimalPerformanceAcademy.org website. I do have a blog, uh, or I have started writing blogs. Now, there are two blogs that I've just recently written. I wrote this one last week, which is called Embarking on a Journey to Become a Public Speaker, a Novice's Guide, as well as Creating a Speaker One Sheet, which we'll talk about this for a little bit today as well. So these are probably two reads that you definitely want to do. And I'll put that in the chat so you have it that way when you save the chat. There's the link to uh, to the chat, so that way these are two things that you that you could read. Now, if for an example, if you are in a um, uh, on LinkedIn, I do also create what's called a newsletter. If we're friends on LinkedIn, and if you scroll down to uh, my featured, I do have what I call the small business success tweaks, and uh, and I and I post that blog on LinkedIn as well. So that way you you, you can get it either uh, either way. Whenever you are actually doing a public speaking, it, you can consider it kind of as like an art form, that, that that where you have the power to captivate, to inspire, and also to influence others. Now, when you're building your business, having that ability is how you're going to start attracting more and more people to your business. So the, the whole thing about pu public speaking is, is customer awareness of who you are and what it is that you do. And the more people that you could share your message with, especially at one mo at one time, then the, the, the more likely you're going to be able to uh, influence those people. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. And okay, so so here are some places that you can speak. I'm going to put this in a word file. And so these these are some places that you can do. Now, one of the first things that you can do is that you can create your own workshop. 
And that's what it could be a two hour event. It could be a one hour event. Okay. So, uh, so some of y'all said that you you've done this uh, the, the the meetings at your, at your office now. But if you're going outside your own sphere of influence, then you you may want to start creating your own uh, workshops. You may also want to do uh, seminars, kind of like what this is, or even uh, what is known as a, a webinar. So these are these are all public well, ways that you can actually uh, start uh, uh, gaining your name out there. Like I have the business Kickstarter workshop coming up here on, on July 1st. So that is going to be what, what is known as a, a one day workshop. And then of course, well, as you get more experience there, now how many people have you guys ever been to a seminar or a multi-day event? Okay, Jennifer has. And Tori, if you, if you have just a yes uh, in the chat. And then uh, other things that you can do is uh, go by the multi-day event is you can do a, a three-day masterclass. So as you are building your, uh, your business, getting your name out there becomes very, very, very important. You can also create events. You can do this on websites like meetup.com. Like I, when I formed the Small Business Owners Meetup, you can create your own events. Obviously, you can do it on LinkedIn. Facebook. Maybe some of y'all have not heard about this, but the, uh, Alignable is very popular in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. It may be popular in Dallas as well. I do not know. You may want to look at Alignable.com. And another place is going to be at what is known as all e allevents.in. These are, these are different uh, places where you can uh, post events. Another thing that you can do is you can be a guest on podcasts. So start finding uh, places where people are having podcasts that have that are in your same general area. Then start trying to be a guest. And we'll be talking about more about that here in a little bit. You can also be on other people's stages. That's probably where you most people are, are uh, actually get started is to go is to go in front of another group that they're not organizing themselves. That way you're not putting in all the hard work with the marketing and the promotions and doing all that stuff. Why not? Why not go where where, where other people are actually doing it? Here are some uh, examples. Kiwanis. The Lions Club. Be a guest speaker at a local chamber of commerce. All of these are, are ones that you may want to uh, consider. The Elks Club. The Rotary. Most large cities have all of these, uh, have all of these organizations. Um, you also uh, professional organizations. What do you... <laughs> For an example, this is where, uh, where Tori and I met. We met at a local, uh, what is called a Real Estate Investors Association. There are uh, clubs out there like um, uh, through the SBA, something known as uh, SCORE. So those of you who don't know about SCORE, that is most li uh, that is a good source to go for entrepreneurs to go to start talking with other uh, entrepreneurs that, are, that, uh, that are, uh, actually have been very successful in business. There's also the National Speakers Association. Most large towns have an NSA, or and we'll talk about that in a moment. But they do have um, uh, those organizations. There's also a, a lot of co-working spaces, which is where entrepreneurs can go uh, and they meet other entrepreneurs and have basically like a small office, uh, you know, like a shared small office. And a lot of times, those co-working spaces will have uh, guest speaking events. So you, you can definitely look at that. If you're in the Raleigh area, and this is not for Jennifer. Jennifer can learn, learn, uh, learn this and try to find this on, in her own area. There is a place known as uh, Raleigh Founded. And there's also another one called uh, the Regions RTP. Now, I know Frank knows what Regions RTP is because that's where we had our first couple of meetings. Yep. That was up there. In the, that's up there by the airport in the Raleigh-Durham uh, area. 
So these are just uh, different co-working spaces. And there's so many other places that you can actually go. Right now, one of the biggest things that's, that, that's ex been extremely popular since, uh, basically since COVID, are known as uh, uh, podcasts. Now, if I were to go to Google right now and just say, how popular are podcasts? Right now, going by Google, there's 120 million con uh, podcast listeners and over 400 uh, uh, in the U.S. and 420 in the world. The, uh, experts suggest that by uh, by uh, by 2023, it's going to be basically 160 million podcasters worldwide. Who in here uh, has ever listened to a podcast on a regular basis? Back in 2019, uh, or excuse me, 2007, uh, 2016, I created my own podcast. It was called Life's Little Lessons, and it was me promoting my second book. However, uh, that podcast, I was very infrequent uh, 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 of, of creating it. So I, mean, I would record a week, I would record the next week, record two weeks, skip three months, record, record one, skip two months. So I was very, very inconsistent. And, uh, and, so, and so, therefore, in 2016, I stopped uh, 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 promoting it or stopped, I stopped re recording it, but I liked the name of the podcast. And um, so what I ended up doing was in 2017, after I wrote my uh, second book or excuse me, a year after I wrote my second book, I wanted to actually get that podcast going again. And I thought, well, how am I going to do this podcast? And but you know, and, and still be consistent. And I, I then realized when I was hiking out in Las Vegas that w the easiest way to have a podcast where I don't have to worry about me bringing in content is to interview other people. They're the, the guest is the one bringing in the content. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I, if I had both uh, Jennifer, Frank, and, and Tori, uh, you know, they're, they're scheduled to be on my show. Can I basically ask them the exact same question every time, or e each one the same question? And they'll all give me different results. So that's when I created this uh, this show called the Life's Little Lessons Podcast. And this is where I have um, uh, uh, my show for you know, it's a one time cost of twenty seven dollars. But it's the where I interview fifty nine uh, I interview fifty nine people from across the world. I had uh, uh, four different continents in there, and I would say probably one of my most favorite shows is just to show you uh, for me. This is for me was that. Um, uh, was uh, when I interviewed this guy from Moscow. He was a he was a business coach uh, from the, uh, uh, from uh, Moscow, Russia. I would say he was probably by far the most respectful and the most kind person I had in my show. And everybody and everybody on the show was good, you know was kind, but he was so respectful um, that you know it was just really really cool just to how see other people live. So getting on uh, people's podcasts are a surefire way of really getting, uh, getting your name out there how to get on shows one of the things that you one of the ways to find podcasts to be on you do a google, a google search on your topic and then just put podcast guest so let me um uh, i'm just uh, business coach podcast guest as an ex as an example and now here's and so right now I now have this one link that the number one on Google uh, coaching podcast looking for uh, for guests. So now you can start looking at hey let me get my name out to you. Now when you're doing a podcast that is like one of the first steps of becoming a public speaker because you, you're now getting in front of the audience um, where but you, where you don't have to go up there and you know, you know create your content yet. You're it's getting you used to sharing your message with other people. So let's go ahead and, and also look at some places, uh, other places that you can go. So the, the, the one of the uh, places that, that I've looked at so far is, you know, if you're, if you're looking to be on other people's co uh, podcast, one of, the, one of the first places you may want to look at is a place known as listennotes.com. And then you can go for listeners, uh, for business, uh, or for uh, podcasters. You can uh, believe you can create a free account with them, and then you can go ahead and see about uh, you know finding other podcasts that you can be on. A second place that you can go is something known as podcastguests.com. 
Now, what they're going to do is once you know, the, for, with the, now right now, to my understanding, this is all free. I am a member and have been for a, over a couple of years on this website here on the podcast uh, guest, uh, dot com. Um, What I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to pull up my email. And here's the email that I got on uh, a Monday uh, of this week at 4.37 p.m. And this is them, this will happen at least once a week. And usually you're going to be getting a two, uh, uh, two people looking for podcasts. It will look exactly like this, with the exception that it's going to be about twice as, as long because this one here is actually only, uh, is only showing one, uh, one show. So as an example, so I got this email and I, you know, I would just scroll down and, uh, and I see that uh, podcast number 7526, Ricky Romance, No Filter Podcast Seeks Female Models. It'll give you, and I don't know what's the, what's the name of the show, the show description. And then normally what I do is I scroll down to the bottom and I, uh, to, uh, to the bottom and I always look at this, uh, this last field. How much is it going to cost to be on that show? Now, uh, right now, this one this one happens to be free. Sometimes they charge, sometimes they don't. I was say probably about half of them uh, don't do not charge. And then what you can do is you can go check out the, their website and or their show URL to see if it's something that you might be interested uh, in being on. And then if it is, there's going to be here is your booking email address. Sometimes they'll give you a booking website. And that way, now you can go in there and, and say, "Hey, I'm going to be on the July 13th, uh, you know, at 2 p.m." Now, one of the things that you always want to uh, find out beforehand, before you're on one of these shows, is um, is there no, besides the, is there going to be a fee? Is um, is it going to be live or is it going to be uh, taped or pre-recorded? Because if it's a, a radio show, you're going on live, so uh, that means you got to be. Definitely want to be careful of your language and and, th and and things that you're saying. If it's pre-recorded, I feel more comfortable with a pre-recorded because they're, they're recording it, they'll edit it, and then they'll they will launch it at a future date. When I had my show, the Life's Little Lessons a show, when I first started uh, in the first week, I recorded four uh, four shows, and then I and, and then I dripped them out uh, you know, once a week for four weeks. So if you're thinking about becoming a podcast host yourself. Then uh, I, I'm sure you, you all know that all of you that, uh, that have ever watched a TV series, that TV series, you know, like say, hey, they're releasing the most recent episode of, say, The Walking Dead. Most likely that show was filmed a month ago or two months ago because they had to go through all the editing and, and, and putting everything together. So just be aware that a lot of times that they will be dripped. Here is, an, here is another example of an email um, that, I, that I got uh, earlier today. Somebody referred me to be on this person's show, and she's and basically what she's telling me, and this is being today, and I'm dating this right now as, as being May 30th of 2023. But she says, go ahead and book. Uh, she's going to be booking for September. So sometimes, sometimes the bookings can be a, a little bit further out, just uh, just so that you're aware. Make sure you put that onto your calendar uh, well, uh, whenever you do that, so you don't uh, that, so that you don't forget about it. Uh, another place uh, that you may also want to join is something known as speakerhub.com. Now, Speaker Hub, instead of them uh, sending you uh, uh, automated uh, uh, emails that may or may not fit your criteria, Speaker Hub is, the, is a place that you can join for free. And then you start, uh, here's my account. I just created it yesterday. Um, where you can put in your name, you put in your your credentials, your preferred pronoun, you know whatever, whatever it is, and then you can start putting in like you know what are the things, what are the topics that you talk about, what are some some of your publications, so like what are your speaking topics, is that so therefore now somebody that might be looking for a speaker of this nature, then you they they may reach out to you and say hey would you be interested in speaking on one of these to say your my the secrets of the of the eight mindsets would you be interested in speaking about that in LA for five thousand dollars you know you know whatever it is so this is where you can start building your uh, one of the locations where you can start building your uh, your profile your speaker's uh, profile and then another place that you may want to be looking to oh now this is NSA the, the National Speakers Association their website is nsaspeaker.org most large cities have one now you may go to the you may join this group and and just attend their event, 
but they're all about um, you know uh, building your speaker profile, uh, building your speaker awareness, uh, you know teaching you the the topics uh, or not the topics, but teaching you what you need to know about being a speaker. So that's nsaspeaker.org. And then I'm going to go to the next website uh, or this next tab here. And this is another place where you can start uh, working on your skills as a speaker. This is the part of the safest environment that you can do. It is something known as Toastmasters. Toastmasters.org. Most cities will have multiple uh, organizations. Uh, the, the cost to join a Toastmasters is not very expensive. It's like, uh, uh, I think it's $45 uh, per year uh, to join. Let me see how to join. Um, it's like, yeah, here it is. It's $45 uh, international dues uh, fees because Toastmasters is international. And then if you're a first time uh, person joining, there's, a, there's an additional $20 uh, fee as well. Now, each club, uh, each Toastmasters club, if you were to, you know, when you join that one specific club, that they will have a small club fee. Uh, and it's going to be either paid uh, annually or, or or twice a year, depending on how often they meet. So if you were to go to Toastmasters.org, so I'm going to put in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Actually, I'm going to put it because I joined Toastmasters when I lived in Las Vegas. Uh, so I'm going to see about uh, uh, finding a club, which is up here in the right-hand corner. And uh, I'm going to put in Las Vegas or uh, 891146, which is close to the 89146, which is close to where I, uh, where I live. So this will, will zoom in and zoom, and zoom out. I don't know why. There we go. We've got to scroll down. So, so you'll see in the Las Vegas area, there the highest number that I can see right here is 46. So it's 46. Toastmasters Club in the Las Vegas uh, uh, Valley area. Now, I belong to a club uh, called Pro Toastmasters. So I can go ahead and say, for an example, type in uh, Pro. Pro appears five times. So there's Pro, uh, a Pro Toastmasters right there. It's number 22. Now, they meet... Um, According to this, and going to their Pro Toastmasters website on the Toastmasters organization site, they meet uh, on the first and third Wednesday of the month. They meet between 7 to 8.30, and in this case, they're only meeting on Zoom. When I was part of Pro Toastmasters, which was before COVID, they met every Wednesday, and obviously they met in person at that time. So some uh, groups will meet uh, on a weekly basis, some will meet uh, twice a month. Yes, uh, Frank. You, you what, you'll be given a guideline as to what the what you know what to be uh, talking about, and then you create whatever content that you want to create. So, uh, when you, when you first join um, a, a club, you're going to be given like a, diff, a different educational programs that you can be, uh, that you can follow. the The one that most people go through is this thing called called Pathways, which is an online version. And then you can uh, and then at this point you can start um, finding out which path that you want to take and then which topics. As an example, um, when I joined uh, Toastmasters, uh, here are here, these are these are my talks here. I wasn't part of the leader dynamics past. So uh, for example, this is the answer kind of answer your question. Usually when you give your first talk, most talks are between uh, seven or six to eight minutes. Uh, the first talk most people give is what's known as the icebreaker. And that's a four to six minute talk. And all you're going to do on that talk is you're going to be talking about yourself. That's, that's all with the, that's the only thing. So you can talk about like, so for example, I, I videotape all of my talks, but here's my, here's my icebreaker talk. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is um, my notes. Tonight we'll be sharing you with four interesting aspects of my life and show how, so I, I basically memorize this verbatim. So these are the four things that, that affected my life. I, you know, I talked about breaking hospital records by being the biggest baby ever born at that time at the hospital, coming in at 12 pounds, seven ounces. Talk about uh, travel. The third, you know, so so as you can see, I could talk about whatever I, I, I want to talk about, Frank. So if you are if you are creating a signature talk, this is a perfect place to go and give segments of that signature talk. 
there was a lady by the name of Denise that was part of our Toastmasters, and she was getting ready to, uh, to give a, uh, a big uh, talk for a flower convention. So all of her talks were like different segments of her speech. So she, so she can give feedback on, because what they're going to do is you're going to give your talk, and then you're going to get feedback from what's known as an evaluator, and they're going to evaluate your speech. So that way you can uh, you can know what uh, how to work on things. So this is perfect way for you to get your 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 toes wet in, into the public speaking environment because m n nobody is going to be for the most part is not going to be a a polished speaker and speak in front of ten thousand people on the first time they're on stage. They have to build up to this. So this this is why Toastmasters is is, is so important. And like I said, you, you will get uh, feedback. This is the, the feedback report that was uh, given uh, by my evaluator. And um, as an example, this is the, this is the icebreakers uh, talk. You see it says icebreaker there, level one. And then on this particular case, the beginning of the, so this beginning uh, marks the, your Toastmasters journey. And then um, the guidelines is, um, is you answer these questions. How, how did you feel before the talk and how did you feel after the talk? I am confident and calm about speaking in front of groups. Okay, maybe I was a two here and maybe I'm a three uh, afterward. So 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 these are the uh, so it doesn't matter the subject matter, it just matters that you're you know you're following a, a, a particular guideline. There is um There is uh, the 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 next level talk I I gave was this one here, is so that you give a talk, get evaluated, come back the next time, give the exact same talk again, and while after you've incorporated the evaluation uh, uh, recommendations into your talk, so in this case I I, talk, I did this talk that I called when a stunt goes south, and then when a stunt goes south part two that's when I got injured while doing stunts on a movie. In a, in a Civil War movie. So I, I was playing a, a, a twist on the words. <laughs> South meaning not good, it's South meaning the Southern part, <laughs> the Southern US. <laughs> so, but in, in this particular case, uh, I, I'll, let me see here. I'm not going to play it uh, at, at all. Or good evening. <laughs> so, this, this to me is representing me doing the stunt. There's a gun, I was holding a rifle. And then there was the camera operator was right behind me. So th that was what my talk was about. So I was using, in this particular case, I was using props. Okay, so Toastmaster is a great way for you just to, for you to get uh, uh, some great experience. So I highly recommend them. Um, now, most usually you, you can attend them for free um, as a guest. So you can check out to see if the club is something that you like. Or, you can, uh, or when you decide to uh, speak, then you have to join the actual club. So, for an example, if I'm going back to um, uh, the, the these 48 clubs in in Las Vegas, I may say, you know, I may go out and say, I don't like how, what how, what this number three does. They say, I'm going to go out and, and check out number 12. So, number 12 was it's called the. Um, the Star Masters uh, Toasters uh, Toastmasters Club. They meet on the first and third Thursday at six thirty p.m. Oh, that's perfect. I go attend their club. I like these people. I'll I'll join this club. So that's that's usually how it works. Now some clubs are going to be themed oriented, and some clubs uh, are going to be um, uh, are going to be restricted to only certain people. For an example. Uh, an electric company may only allow uh, people that works at that electric company uh, to attend their Toastmasters. So sometimes they will be. I have, uh, I'm considering joining the the uh, the Raleigh Realtors uh, Toastmasters Club, which is only resigned for people that are part of the, the Raleigh Board of Realtors organization. And I'm a member as an affiliate, not as a, not as a realtor. So I could join that uh, that group, but but not but nobody else uh, could join that was that's not un that is unaffiliated with the uh, the board of realtors. So sometimes they will be restricted. Okay. Any questions uh, so far? Because I know I've been talking for about forty five minutes here. Any questions so far on what I've covered? You can you you can unmute yourself and just just blurt it out.
or just say no, uh, no questions uh, in the chat. Uh, can you hear me, Kevin? Okay, well, I'm gonna assume the silence means that people are falling asleep, except Frank is like, Kevin, this, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, yes, sir. Okay, uh, what was the level of uh, skill over the different members of the uh, Toastmasters that you saw? And did you see a good bit of improvement in people? Absolutely saw uh, improvement in myself and other people. Uh, when when Pro Toastmasters was formed, it was uh, formed uh, for uh, professional speakers, people that were wanting to become professional public speakers, even though we did allow people that were new uh, to join. So we had a, a, a bunch of different skill levels. Uh, let me go back and type in Control F. Um, I, mean, I was part of about three, uh, I had attended like a, a two or three different clubs. Uh, sometimes they will, have, they will have a club picture. So I'm, I'm just trying to see if they've got a club picture. So this was, this was, a, um, I forgot, a, a Dottie, and that was her daughter, a, a Kathy. Um, so these other four people I don't recognize. But these are the, are the collegiate uh, mother, mother, daughter. There was a gentleman by Al Jensen. He was a very polished uh, speaker. We had some very polished uh, speakers there that were actually, you know, making five ten thousand uh, dollars per talk um, uh, out in the go out, uh, out in the real world. And where this guy here could be, hey, I've never given a talk before, or I uh, English is my second language, and I'm trying to give a talk in English. So, so it's all skill levels. And all skill levels are are welcome to attend, and and to uh, and to fill the, the various roles. Yes, I'm going to be talking about that in just a second. Actually, that's going to be I'll be talking about that in about two or three minutes, uh, Jennifer. So, if there's no other questions about this, I, I do want to I do want to continue. Let me see what this is. Oh, here's another uh, website. If I haven't already talked about, it. it's called uh, podcastguests.com. Yeah, I think I already have talked about that one. Um, here's another uh, po uh, podcast uh, site where you can get uh, interviews. It's called interviewconnections.com. And I'll slow down so you can write it down or take a screenshot. The next one is going to be podmatch.com. Okay. Now, one of the things that if you want to start watching other speakers, and this is as you're building your signature talk, uh, uh, Jennifer, is, is, and I used to do this a lot when I was uh, uh, having lunch at, uh, at my desk. I would actually go to this thing called TED.com. So I'm sure many of you have ever heard of, of uh, TED Talks. Now, one of the things that you will see when somebody's giving a TED Talk, you always want to watch their body language. Now, in the TED Talk, I'm going to go ahead and hit the play the button here. The all-new Ergo Smart Base from Tempur-Pedic and... automatically responds to snoring. Okay. So no more hiding under your pillow, uh, because this system actually out. detects snoring now, uh, and adjusts Frank, to help reduce it. For your limited video. time, you, save up to $500 the, uh, on the select Tempur-Pedic adjustable mattress sets. Were, were you, you able to hear the, the sound? Yes. I was asking, were you able to hear the sound from the, uh, from the audio, from what I'm playing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you would notice that when somebody gives a TED talk, that they always stand within that red circle. So they try to minimize your body movements. So you're not, you know, you're not pacing, you're not going all over the place, uh, which is now is is what one of the things I am going to highly, highly, highly recommend is to all whenever you're giving a talk. Always video record it. Get a mini tripod, get a regular size tripod. If you're at Toastmasters or whatever, you always want a video record of everything. Even if you don't like looking at yourself, you're going to have to get used to it at some point, but you want to video record everything because that's how you're going to see your improvement. Not, and when I was giving my first Toastmasters talks, 
Um, I did. I, I went one step further. Now this was. Uh, let me see here. This this talk was given on. No, it, well, yeah, it was given on February eighth, two thousand eighteen. So when I uh, when I was doing this recording, I wanted to, I wanted to go one step further. So when I recorded my very first TED on my very first uh, Toastmasters talk, which is the one that's right here, I'm just going to. So that's me right there. So I've, I've got a, a little um, uh, a tripod where I, where I'm a video recording myself. But not only did I video record this, remember this was five years ago. I, I also made this a Facebook Live. So it's like, hey, let's push the envelope even further. <laughs> so let's do this as a Facebook <laughs> lesson. The whole world can now see me while, while I did this. But I don't have to say, say that you have to do it, but I would highly recommend that you do it. And it, 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 if you remember, I was talking about uh, uh, Dottie, uh, Kalusha, uh, Kalusha, that's the lady right there. That's the, that's the mother, daughter, uh, family right there. The guy behind him, that's a guy named Kevin. And he, wa he was a very polished uh, speaker. He was also the uh, prince, the principal at a Christian high school. Um, so, so everybody comes from all different uh, uh, career backgrounds. This guy over here, he was a professional gambler. The girl next to him, uh, barely, you know, she was very, she was brand new. So everybody has different things. Now, one of the things you may also want to look at is what is the room set up? Some rooms are uh, are set up to, in this particular case, where um, people are spread out. So you got to learn about your eye contact uh, or, you know, or your pace. Because if I were to walk forward toward the camera, now my uh, my back is toward these people uh, on the edge. So you always have to be aware of, uh, of your room that you're, that you're going to be speaking in. And being in different kinds of room situations will help, will give you a lot more uh, confidence uh, or a lot more, uh, you know, crowd awareness. And then when you're actually on a stage, a lifted stage, then you know that you 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 get the training on you know how to um, uh, you know how are you presenting yourself. Now we're talking about TED talks. So uh, one of the uh, one of the I'm going to go ahead and move into the parts of a signature talk, and then I'm going to go go into some of your your promotional materials. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So whenever you are um, uh, putting together a signature talk, let me get this out all the way. Actually, I'm just thinking of a podcast now. Now I am going to be putting together a um, a a course on this. You know, a two day well, probably a, a two day event, and to go into a lot more details on creating your signature talk. What I'm going to be showing you right now are the parts of your signature talk. And, uh, and the thing is, when I was learning this, this was a five-day uh, event of, of between 12 to 15 hours per day. So I'm about to give you guys a, was it five times 12, is a 60-hour event in, in the next 15 minutes. So this is a very, 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 very condensed version. So if you guys are interested in doing more, just go ahead and schedule that discovery session. If you want to, you can even do that now if you want, and we'll, and we'll talk about more of that, about that on the discovery session. So whenever you are giving a signature talk, the very, very first thing uh, to do is when you come up on stage and you just got bit and you were just introduced is that you want to scan the audience. Okay, so this may be just a few seconds. What this is doing is allowing you to become grounded. So therefore, like you know, the 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 the, the, the audience is doing the uh, is doing the, the applause. You come out there, you stand center stage. Maybe you're picking up a microphone. Maybe maybe you're wearing a body set of some sort. You just get there and get grounded. The next thing that you want to do is what is knowing knowing uh, as a as enrolling questions. Another thing would be a statistic. Or some or, or some kind of hook, so you want to be asking enrolling questions. Usually, if you're going to be asking enrolling questions, these there's usually going to be a, a three different enrolling questions that you want to ask. And the question that you want to ask is you want to be able to engage the entire audience to where they are actually uh, participating. 
So when you ever you ask a question, you want to be, be able for even yourself to respond to it. And you want to show the audience by your body language how you want them to respond. For an example, if you're on a stage, the first and only question you may want to, after you ask the question is that you may want to raise your hand above your head. And make sure that you know whatever the whatever you're doing, the audience is only going to do 25%. So if you raise your hand all the way up, you know, like full extended, the audience members may they may go halfway. If you go halfway, they may even you know, you know get with their hands not even above their shoulder. So always be aware that the engagement from the audience is always going to be at least 25% of what you're doing on stage. That's how they're going to respond. So now with the enrolling questions, again, you want an enrolling question, depending on your topic, to be something that they are going to, uh, re, re, uh, that's, that we're at the end of the three questions, everybody uh, has a chance to respond. As an example, I may be going onto a stage where I'm going to be talking to uh, people that are, um, uh, that are entrepreneurs. And I may say, who in here, by a show of hands, has, uh, uh, is a person that is, one year or less or brand new to, uh, to starting a business. And then I wait for them and give them time to respond and then always give them a thank you. Always say thank you after they, because you want to re reward them with kindness. You want to reward them where they feel like, hey, they've just been acknowledged for, um, a part, for, for partaking that. Then you may say, who in here has been in business for under five years? And then who in here has been in business for five years or more? Do you see how now I just asked three questions and, and now I, I could be judging the audience as to, okay, 10% of the people are five years or more, 30% of the, of the audience on estimate is, you know, one to, you know, say one to five years and the other 60% are, are, are brand new. So now I'm getting, uh, I'm getting an assessment, but I'm asking questions that's going to involve everybody. Now, uh, for those of you that have been to more than uh, a, a seminar of some type, you may have always heard the pro with somebody that does the en enrolling questions, they may end it up with, who in here is not going to raise their hands no matter what I do? That's, that's a common joke uh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of speakers will use. I, I use it myself if I feel like I'm not getting uh, engagement. So those that's going to be the second part of your signature talk. Now, the, this uh, the parts that I'm going to be going through. We're going to be going through ten uh, 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 ten pieces, and then each, uh, and then some of them are going to have uh, let's just call them uh, sub uh, steps involved. So after you've at, you scanned and asked the three enrolling questions, you're probably four minutes, three four minutes uh, into your talk at this point in time. At this time, even though you just uh, you have been introduced, and hey, welcome to the stage, Kevin Dunlop, you know, like you, you're like a, say, in a boxing ring. So you always want to say uh, say who you are. Then you want to you want to go through your welcome uh, uh, part of your talk, as well as the name of your talk. Now, how that goes? Hey, hello, my name is Kevin Dunlap, and I want to say thank you and welcome for being here today. And I, I may I, no. This is the um, this is the next step. Step four is the acknowledgement. Thank you. And if you're a guest on somebody else's stage, uh, edify. Now, one thing I have not talked about, and I won't go too much into this, is uh, writing an introduction. So whenever you're going to be on somebody's stage, you always want to be introduced by somebody else. It's usually going to be the event host. So you want to have an introduction that, uh, to write, and we'll, we'll go more about that in, into the when we actually do the um, uh, the two day class. But the introduction is uh, it'll be a fact about yourself, you know, so, some information about yourself, and then and you may even reference something about the talk that you about, that you're about to give. And then uh, they will introduce you. Let's say uh, Frank is introducing me. Uh, he goes through like say a forty five second introduction. And I say, hey, welcome to the stage, Kevin Dunlap. And I'll go to the stage and, and then I'll go through that. When I'm on step four, the acknowledgement is go you're going to be acknowledging at least three things. The first thing that you're going to acknowledge is the audience. So thank you for being here. I know you take you, your time out of your busy schedule to be here today. And I want to, I want to uh, thank you for uh, taking the time and being here tonight, today, this afternoon, you know, whatever time frame it is. Acknowledgement is also, that's the thank you part. The acknowledgement uh, is when you are going to acknowledge, say, the, the host and the event. I, said, I want to say uh, thank you to Fidelity, Fidelity uh, Title uh, for being here today. Isn't this such a beautiful place? Give, give Fidelity Title a round of applause. 
then go to the thank you and then to the edify of, of the host of all. And Frank, he did a great job reading uh, reading that introduction, uh, didn't he? Give, uh, give Frank a, a round of applause. So what you're doing there is that you're you're getting participation again because you want to see that, that they're actually doing that. And most people will give applause uh, when, uh, to somebody else when, uh, when they're asked. And then if they're not doing it, usually by just crowd, you know, the crowd influence, they'll give an applause just because the, the rest of the, the rest of the crowd is doing it. So, you, so you're so you're doing that and you're showing kindness to, uh, to the host. The fifth part of your talk is what most people call it the WIFM. Does anybody know what the WIFM is? Put it in the chat if you know what the WIFM is. That's okay, Tori, Frank. Does anybody know what the WIFM is? The WIFM basically stands for And when I say what's in it for me, that's from the, 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 the audience perspective. So, so this is where you're going to be going into. Now, basically, this is going to be very important for all you entrepreneurs who are looking to blah, 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 uh, build your business doing whatever. So that so this is going to be kind of a, a little bit of an introduction into your uh, into your talk. So you want to, this is where they're going to say, why are they here? Why are they listening to you? Uh, if you're one of one speaker of seven speaker uh, speakers uh, speaking that day, why are they why are they listening to you? Uh, or at least what you know what is it that they're going to gain? The next thing that you're going to go, go into, and I, I have a, an entire course on this, is called the, what is, what is your what is your transformation story? So this is where you will. Uh, This is where you're going to be sharing your story. Now, this this story can be anywhere from one minute long, or it could be four or five minutes long, depending on what your story is. Now, this story is going to be made up of several parts. It's going to be made up of um, where you know when things were going great. You know, this is what I was doing, and then you go into what I call the plunge. Something negative happens and it knocks you down. And then you're going through a third part, like, you know, now that I got knocked down, you're going through a third part, which is what I call the search. You're trying to find out what is it you want to do next? You know, how, how am I going to get out of this? The fourth part is uh, the transformation itself. And then the fifth part is, you know, where are you at? Uh, where are you help? Uh, where are you at right now? For an example, I'm going to give a really, really brief example of my transformation story. And um, and I, I've said this so many times, it's going to be like, okay, I, you know, I was working as a computer programmer. I was working on this uh, a project known as Y2K. Maybe y'all heard of that. Maybe y'all haven't. And then, I, was, and then uh, I came back from vacation and then my boss said he could not find me another assignment. So therefore he was going to, to downsize me. And since I took since I was being let go uh, in the middle of the year, I didn't earn all of my vacation, and they were taking all of that out of my final paycheck, and they're uh, leaving me with no uh, no paycheck. I had no idea what I was going to do. So you saw a great. There was my my past. My plunge was getting downsized. I started, you know, I would go out. I was looking for something else. And I uh, answered an ad in the newspaper. They said, "Brad, bring your resume." And I couldn't find out the. It was actually a uh, opportunity meeting for a network marketing company. However, I was not dissuaded. And that's what gave me my first example of being an entrepreneur. And this is where and this is where it led me. So that was that's a very, very, very brief version of my transformation story. So if I'm speaking to other entrepreneurs, they will be able to relate to that story, or at least they will be able to um, have a, a empathy uh, uh, to my story. So that's what your your trans uh, your transformation story is all about. Now we're going to go into your, now whenever you're giving a talk, especially if it's going to be 60 minutes or even 90 minutes, you, you're mainly going to be talking about three different main topics. Okay. So when you're giving, so these are going to, they may be related, they may not. And again, we'll talk about more of that in, in the training. So I'm just going to go, like I said, really, really brief into this. What you wanted, uh, the first thing you want to talk about is your, uh, is what I call your data point number two. Okay, so when you when you come up with your three data points, you're going to label them as this: which one is the most important, which one is the second most important, and then which one is the least important. Now, all three are going to be important. All three are critical, but uh, but you want to start off with your second uh, data point. 
The reason being is that you want to build anticipation to number one, and number one comes last. Because you know, because you want them to be involved, and you want them to say, you know, stay engaged through this entire part of your talk. Now, if you're giving a 60-minute talk, the scan, enrolling questions, name, uh, thank, acknowledgments, thank you, the Wilfram and your story, you're probably eight or nine minutes, or uh, seven, seven to nine minutes into your uh, into your talk. Now, when you're giving your your data points, they're, they're going to be broken down into three main pieces. One, uh, I'm going to, let me just write the pieces. You will start off with the what. You know, you know what is it that you're going to be talking about? Why is it that important? And then you'll spend most of the rest of that time on that data point uh, talking about the how. So, you know, you know, what is it? Like, say, if I'm talking about uh, finding your ideal client, what you, know, you need to you need to be able to target your ideal client. You need to know who this person is. Don't want to be wasting money chasing the wrong people. But why is it so important? It's because if you if you go and chase the wrong people, you, you could very easily go out of business because you're spending too much money with the or, uh, with the wrong people. And this is how you do it. Does this make sense so far? Give me a yes or a thumbs up if it makes sense. Take it for quarter. Okay. Okay. Then uh, the, the another uh, when you're doing your data point, another thing that you want to uh, have, if especially if you really want them to learn, is you want to have what's called a, is a, a working exercise. This is where uh, you, you you ask them to do something experiential in the talk. Sorry. Okay. If you can make it experiential, I would suggest that you that you do do that. That could be like, okay, I want, what I want y'all to do is for the next three minutes, sit, uh, uh, talk to the, per the the person next to you and talk about what is going to be the name of your talk. And so, and so you have them actually discuss it between themselves by making it interactive or experiential. It, you can get a lot stronger effect out of those uh, out of the people in the audience. And then after they've they've done that for that two or three minutes or however long you deem it's necessary, then one of the best things you could do is what, what is known as a group share. So Frank, tell me, uh, or you ask the audience, but I'm going to say this because this is one of the things. So Frank, what did you what did you discover while doing this exercise? Or Tori, what did you discover while doing this exercise? And then and then have them share. If the room is big enough, they can just uh, shout shout it out. If it's small small enough, they can just shout it out. If it's a lot, uh, big enough, you may have to have a, a mic runner or have a, a microphone that is a uh, um, uh, stationed at uh, various parts uh, in the room. Now, for those of you that have gone to uh, seminars before, a lot of times the group share will actually have a strong effect on the other uh, the other audience members because maybe they, maybe they had a a, a, a breakthrough. Okay. And now uh, another thing that you can also uh, incorporate is what is known as a, a state change. This is what, uh, um, this could also be considered like a, a ritual. So whenever you are uh, building your business and you want to go on stage, having rituals are, 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 can be very important. If you've ever heard of a gentleman by the name of Tony Robbins, he does things called anchors. Uh, and, and NLP is known as the anchor. Like he, he will beat, beat his chest or he will do something like this to, to, to ground that. You may have people do some you know, weird noise or whatever. Like for an example, my company is called Optimal Performance Academy. And I, and I realized when I created that business, uh, that business name, that the initials are OPA. Well, in, in Greek, in Greece, OPA is a, is, a, is a sign of celebration. So I could incorporate that into my, uh, uh, into my, uh, into my talk. And so that those are the different aspects of, the, of data point number two. Then what you're going to be going into, what is known as data point number three. And the thing is when you're uh, doing data point number three, you're going to be doing the exact same uh, four steps in, involved. You're going to do a what, you can do a why, and you're going to do a how. So I'm saying.
you want to do another working exercise, then you're going to do another group share. So, uh, so let's say for an example, data point number two. Uh, let's say you, let's say you're going to spend ten minutes on data point number two. Do you see if you're putting in a two-minute working exercise, then you maybe have a two, uh, and then let's say assume that it takes a minute to, uh, to queue everything up, and you're going to do a two-minute group share, and you're going to do that state change. Well, that part right there, the B, C, and D, is five minutes of your talk. So your your actual talk is only five minutes. So you, so when, whenever you're putting together your talk, you're going to be timing yourself out as to how much time is this actually going to take. So the thing is, now you, you're you're able to have less content that you have to share on stage. You don't have to come up with much content because you're making the the exercise or the the talk more interactive. Now, in, uh, number nine is data point number one. Now, with uh, with data point number one, you want to you definitely want to keep them um uh, uh engage at this point in time this is the reason you're doing uh, uh doing it in this order you're doing that number two first number three and then number one this was so they will stay uh until the very end and then the rest of the the rest of your talk is going to be known as the close now depending on the stage that you're on would depend on if you're going to be able to sell from stage or not sell from stage uh, if you're selling from stage, are you paying a fee to be there, or are you um, are giving them a percentage of your you know, uh, 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 of what you sell? Or if you're not allowed to sell from stage, are you asking people to go to a certain website or or a um, uh, a, a QR code or something like that, some some kind of uh, uh, action so that they can um, uh, get onto your mailing list? Now, this is also known in some circles as the call to uh, CTA or the uh, call to action. So now when we're talking about the close, I'm gonna spend a lot of time here. Uh, again, I'm going, to go, I'm going through this fairly generically, but, uh, but I, I definitely want to make sure that, we are, uh, that we're on the same page. Now the close has two main parts to it. The first, uh, the first part, is going to be what I call the facts. And then the second part are the finesse. The facts are going to be uh, all of the, all of the stuff you do to prepare for the close. The finesse is the steps you take while on stage. Okay, so the facts has ten parts to it. There's there's so much information here, uh, so the facts has uh, ten parts to it. And remember, when you're dealing with the facts, this is the stuff you're doing while you're creating your talk. This is not what you're you're doing on stage. This is all the stuff you can get all of your stuff together. So the first thing that you want to look at is what is the primary problem you will be solving if they invest in you? Also, what are one or two additional So the, the, the so the first thing is you know if they're going to be investing in you, uh, what is it that they're investing in? What problem are you going to be solving? Why would why do you want to, why are they going to pay one thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollars uh, to work with you? So what is that primary problem? So you want to have that in mind, and then you also look at what are two potentially supplementary uh, problems that you're going to be solving. The next is. Uh, what is the name of the program you are so, uh, so what is the name of the program that you're going to be sol uh, solving? 
Now, this name should have a somewhat solution based. I mean, like my my uh, workshop is I'm calling it, you know, that I was telling you about before for $97 is the business Kickstarter workshop. That's not really solution based, but it's still we use the name business Kickstarter. That's to me it, uh, it implies you're starting a business and we're going to be starting it, which is where Kickstarter comes from. And then it's going to be a workshop. So it's going to be, be a solution based or has uh, a or a catchy title. For an example, you could call it that is the the dance. So that, that maybe maybe you you create an acronym or something like that. So it needs to be solution based or it needs to be catchy. <clears throat> now, the third thing you need to decide upon is what is the price of the program. Now, in your head, never use cost, never use price. I'm putting it here deliberately to mislead you. So, uh, so it's not. It's never going to be what is the price of the program. It's going to be what is the the investment of the program. Because they're they're going to be investing in themselves. The word price, the word cost, uh, and those values or those uh, names or words have often a negative connotation to them. So this is why you want to use it. You go, hey, Frank, this is going to be an investment of $29.95. And that way he can start saying, hey, is this something that I that I actually want to uh, get involved with? The next thing is, is a word that I'm going to be saying that most people think that it's, that it's the same thing as the word uh, investment or price, but, it's, but it is not. It is what is the value of the program now can anybody tell me the difference between value and investment you can unmute yourself and, and just let me know i would say uh investment goes out value comes in well investment is what they're going to be paying but uh, this is what the overall um perceived value they will be getting from working with you. So I may say the 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 program is hey this is this the price of this program is going to be say uh, 49.95 but the value is twenty thousand uh, dollars as an example. And I may say, hey, uh, that red car, that Tesla behind uh, uh, Frank, uh, uh, the, the investment of this car right now is say five thousand dollars, but the value of that car is eighty thousand dollars. So you know what if if you're solving a major problem for them, the value is always going to be a lot higher than the investment. If you if you're selling a weight loss program, that value is greater. If you're t uh, if uh, if you're let's say like Tori and you're helping somebody uh, uh, pass an exam, and she says she says she charges two hundred dollars, you know, for this uh, tutoring session uh, to pass this final exam in uh, genetics. Does the person who needs to, uh, to get their doctorate needs to uh, fat, uh, pa uh, pass this course? Is the value great much greater than two hundred dollars? They could be worth thousands to them. Like their whole career could be based on things like that. So the value is always going to be uh, uh, always going to be much higher than the investment. And then there's also what is known as the what is known as a bonus stack. A bonus stack is all of the other stuff you are giving to them if they invest. So if you ever, if you, any of you have been to my website, you will see that I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, you, you guys saw that I had the Life's Little Lessons uh, podcast on, on there for $27. I've got now nine other courses on there. If somebody were to say, hey, if you invest in the, into my coaching program, I will give you these three courses for free, uh, you know, you know as, as a bonus. And those have an individual uh, value of, let's say, $3,000 uh, each. So that, that's, that, you know, what are the other bonuses that you're going to be giving away? Uh, number six is what is your retention strategy? Now the uh, reten uh, the retention strategy is what how, how are you engaging with them 
between the time they buy and the time they start. Now, for those of you that are giving away online programs, that may be that there, there may be no need of a retention strategy. However, if you're selling a coaching program, and I was going to say, say, hey, Tori, I'm sending you this uh, coaching program, and we will begin on uh, the the on uh, say July 5th, the day after the, uh, Independence Day. What am I doing between now and July 5th? How how am I, uh, you know, maybe I'm sending them emails. Maybe I'm saying like, hey, by the way, uh, we, we're going to have a a a a, a pre event uh, uh, a group meeting, or we have a a a, a pre event uh, a coaching session, or or something along those lines. So you know, what is your retention strategy to keep them motivated, especially if you're going to be doing like say a workshop or a live event or something along those lines? Most likely, that's going to be at a later time than 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 the time that you're actually. Uh, uh, working with them. The, the next thing that you need to come up with, and remember, this is uh, this is all uh, before you are, uh, go on stage. This is all the uh, the, uh, the precursor. Is what is the the, com the comparator value? Now, this is a you know, what is the cost they would pay someone else or something similar. Now, this comparative value needs to be at least 10x what you, you know, what, what the cost of your program is. For an example, if I was going to do, say, a three-day workshop that was going to go heavy into um, you know, uh, starting and running a business, I may say, well, th uh, this workshop is, say, um, $14.95, but the comparative value would be, well, this would be the same thing as if you were to go to um, the four years of business school, all stretched down into uh, those three days. And any business school that you can look at, uh, any state college across the country is $30,000. My course is $1,500. So that would be my comparative value. Any questions on the comparative value at this point? No? Well, a couple more things that we're going to cover. You know, refer, referrals and um, referrals and testimonials. So, if you've got any testimonials from uh, from other satisfied clients, uh, see about uh, using those. Whenever I'm asking personally for a a testimonial, the first thing, one of the things I say after you leave the testimonial, how do how do you want me to um, uh, represent your name? So since uh, Frank has his last name on the screen there, and he may say, well, I want to be recognized as Frank L, or I want to be recognized as Frank Lanham, or I may be able to recognize as Frank Lanham, uh, president of Tesla. Or So I always want to see how they want to, uh, how, how you want them to have their name represented. And you may give them a couple of examples. When, when I'm asking for a re uh, recommendations that go on the back of my the books that I've written, I always say, you know, it could be any of these three or four different ways. So, because maybe they maybe they don't want their name to be that they recommend you, but they're also very private, so they don't want their name to be out uh, floating out there. So you never understand, you never know what their level of uh, privacy that they want to maintain. So always, you know, always ask for those testimonials, and if you can get them on video, that's even better. That's and that's for later. The next thing is what guarantees? G U A R A N T. Uh, what kind of guarantees do you offer? Do you offer a money back guarantee? Do you offer a money back guarantee 30 days after they got started? Do you offer no uh, guarantees? I mean, what kind of guarantees that you offer? And then the last thing that you want to look at uh, is, is also what is known as scarcity. There's time scarcity. There's uh, no, yeah, yeah, there's um, um, a discount or money scarcity, or you may say unlimited seating scarcity. Okay, so for for an example, if y'all saw me a meetup, you you see that I say this is limited to one hundred people. That's because my Zoom account, because I'm in Zoom Pro, limits my Zoom calls to one hundred people. So if I had if I had a thousand people trying to vie for the spot, that that is that shows scarcity. A time scarcity a time scarcity event would be, and I'm sure you've seen these on, on commercials. Would be uh, for a limited time until. You know, until the end of the month, this this is what we're this is what we're offering. So I mean, I see them all. I see that all the time. Money uh, scarcity would say uh, for, for only for the next three days that we're cutting, we're cutting this thing off by you know fifty percent. 
extra money scarcity. Okay, limited seating scarcity. It could also mean, like, for an example, let's say all of us want to ride in that uh, Tesla right there, and Frank's the driver. Well, he can say, I can only fit four of the people in the car, one in the front, three in the back. <laughs> I mean, there, there is physically no more room than, uh, than five people in that car. So you always want to use scarcity because when you're using scarcity, um, uh, Um, the the uh, that's Jennifer's uh, a question uh, again. This will be on the uh, uploaded to uh, to to the classroom uh, uh, sometime uh, by the end of the, uh, by the end of today. So you're you're welcome to join that. Even if you just join one time, and, and you can cancel at any time. And make sure you save the chat, Jennifer. So the, those so the um, the reason you want to use scarcity is because if you don't use scarcity, then people are not going to take action. Does that make sense? Because if I say, hey, Frank, you'll buy this at this discount anytime from between now and 10 years from now. Well, you're not going to, most likely, unless you're really burning to do it, you're not going to take action. But if I tell uh, Frank that, hey, you, you have until five o'clock today, it's 436 right now to, uh, to take action. You're not going to say, well, I, I have to take action. So you, by by having scarcity, uh, that's where you you increase your, um, uh, um, um, your chances of having more people buy. Now the finesse part, and I, and, and I know I'm giving a lot of information. If you guys, uh, and I'm sure Frank, it's, uh, he's seen this more than once. I, I tend to give a lot of information <laughs> in my workshops, or excuse me, my trainings. Um, so so here you go. So the finesse part, this the finesse uh, part of your clothes. This is what you're actually doing on stage. There's 15 parts to the finesse. Uh, you see, building a signature talk will take time. And I'm going to go through these fairly quickly because we're about to run out of time. So whenever you're doing the close or, or the call to action, the first thing you want to do is what is known as the lead up. Now, the lead up is how this is your, this is your transition from, from data number one, data point number one to the close. This is this is the one or two sentences that you're going to, um, that you're going to be uh, going through. Now, one thing that I did not talk about that you may have at various points in your talk is what is known as a seed. A seed basically just says that, hey, I'm going to be selling to you. Yeah. And so, as, uh, or you may say something to the effect of, um, uh, at the end of this talk, I am going to show you, or some of you, ways that we can work together is that okay with you and they'll usually say yes so i just did i by by me saying that one sentence right there does that show that hey you know you're at my talk you know i'm probably going to be selling and i said this at the very beginning does that pretty much tell you that hey i'm going to be selling to you but in this case some of you okay if you like working with me well we'll move forward if you don't then uh, this is it so, so now with the uh, with the lead up, <clears throat> this is going to be your transition. Now, uh, this could be a form of a seed that you're that you're going to be using. So, this is going to only be like I said, one or two sentences. The second part is known as the hook. This is a statistic or other fact or uh, or other interesting fact to engage the audience. A hook that I often will use um, is that, um, was it? Um, yeah, was it 50% 50, 50 of all businesses will fail in the first two years, uh, 25, oh, excuse me, in the first three years, and 25 of the, or 25% of those will fail in the first two years or in the first one year. And if I'm talking about business coaching, um, that would be um, a, a very interesting uh, hook for them to um, want to uh, join or, or sign up. The next part is what is known as a, a challenge. Now, when I'm talking about hooks and lead up, you're probably spending less than one minute, maybe 90 seconds on both of those together. So these are very, very uh, short uh, pieces. So on the challenge, this is going to be what is the main problem they are having?
So we talked about this in the facts section as you know, what is the problem? You know, what is their primary problem? So this way you have to do the facts first, even though it's not going to be part of the steps. You, you, it's getting your uh, your 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 head around, you know, what is it that you're going to be, you know, you know, what problem are you going to be focusing on so that they would actually be engaged and want to work with you? The next one is the rationale. This is the reason why you are wanting to solve their problem. Remember, this could be this could be part of your transformation story. You no, know, when I say, "Hey, when I got downsized, that's when I realized corporate America is not as stable as people think it is. You can be downsized at any time." And this, so therefore, I want to work with other people that have so they have other options. So that this is why I'm doing what I do. So that's uh, so that's the reason why I, I'm doing this. So this is why I'm I'm trying to solve that problem. Number five is probably the most important one at this stage. Is asking permission. So that's going to be usually one sentence. Is it okay that I share with you, or with the two of you, what, um, uh, you know, how we can work for uh, better together with each other? Is that okay with everybody? And then Paulie will say yes. Okay. So that gives you now they just they just gave you permission to sell to them. So that's critical because that that they just they, they just made a mental click. They just switched on a light saying, okay, yes, I'm I'm willing to hear what you have to offer. That's that's huge. Then you go into the features and benefits. The features and benefits. The features are going to be what well, this is a online course. This is a virtual coaching session. Uh, this feature is that this is um, uh, this is going to be a workshop that's going to be held in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. This is you know, th that that's the feature. The benefits, or it could be this is going to be six coaching sessions. This is going to be you know, it's going to be what are the features? The benefits is what are they going to get out of it? Well, and say if you signed up for my. Business Kickstarter Basic, that's a nine-week online group coaching session of up to 10 people per group where we're going to be talking about things like, hey, did I go into my benefits? Okay. The seventh one is going to be, what is the investment? Remember, I did not say price, cost, or anything along those lines. This is going to be, this, this investment is going to be $24.95. This is now we're going to be going into the clothes, uh, even further into the, the, the clothes. This is where uh, you sh where you show them the uh, comparator, perceived value, and investment. So as an example, let's say in this particular case, uh, I'm talking about a, a college education. So the comparator could be uh, Twenty thousand dollars versus my course is normally five thousand dollars, but today I'm offering it for fourteen ninety five. So in this particular case, do y'all see that my comparator is at least ten times what the investment is actually going to be? So when I put that up on the board, it goes at twenty thousand uh, dollars, and then five thousand dollars, and then the fourteen ninety five. And then uh, as, a, uh, as a thing, if you're doing this as a PowerPoint uh, presentation, you will actually want to make this number here a different color. And then we'll cover more about that in the actual uh, class, but there, there's a logical reason because the, the, with a different color that the eye is going to be attracted to it. Oops, wrong one. So the next one we're going to call is this is going to be your first Call to action. If you have people going back to the back of the room or if you're handing out forms or you're having people scan a code or you know, whatever you, that call to action is for them to take action, this is when you're going to be doing this. Now, in any talk where you're actually giving a signature talk where you have 
a call to action in it, you will you need to have that call to action three times in your talk. Three times. A lot of people won't act in the first one. Most of the people will act on the second and third. Then this is when you go into your guarantee. I cannot spell this word. G U O A R A N T. So you know, what, is, what is your money back guarantee? Yeah, do you have a guarantee? If you're giving a money back guarantee, for an example, when I uh, do my uh, uh, more expensive classes, I would say that this course is fourteen ninety five. And if you participate and, and, and take uh, and take action in all the in in, in all the actions and in, in all the exercises, and you feel like you got no value from this course, I'll give you hundred percent back. And very, very, very few people will ever take me up on that because, you know, like, because I'm asking them to participate and do all that. If they're just sitting around not doing anything, they're not participating. So they have to be, uh, in that particular case, uh, I'm comfortable with giving that guarantee. And even if one or even 5% of the people ask for money back guarantee, the other people won't. And then also by doing the money back, uh, money back guarantee, this will entice more people to actually want to invest. So don't look at it from the negative. Always look at it from the positive. If this course is going to be fourteen ninety five, and I say money back guarantee, because says, well, I, I I can't lose anything if I participate. I don't learn learn anything. I'll get my money back. So you're going to, you get more people to uh, to invest than you would uh, be detracted by people who actually uh, partake in the guarantee. This is when you do the second call to action. So you've already had them go back to the back of the room or whatever it is. Then you say a guarantee and you're going through this a little a little bit more. You say, okay, so uh, this is still limited. Because remember, your call to action has a... The call to action will have that scarcity uh, card in there as well. Yes, Frank, go ahead. You're muted. If, if you're speaking to an audience in an auditorium, they may not be able to physically do anything to buy your product at that point. Is that correct? Well, depending on, on the stage that you're that you're going to be on, so your call to action has to be uh, 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 recognizing the um, uh, the room that you're going to be in. If they cannot get up and go to the back, back of the room. You may want to have some help out there uh, and have uh, forms on the side. That somebody raise your hand if you if you want to uh, get one of our forms now, or you put up a QR code on the screen if you if you got a slideshow and then have them scan this QR code right now. So you you okay. work around the facility that you're in. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Good question. Then number eleven is going to be uh, your second call to action, and then number twelve is this is when you're going to be doing your social proof. And this is what Tori had to say. And this is what Jennifer had to say. And this is what, and so you start giving your like your testimonials. If you have not already done scarcity, oh, yeah, uh, you remind them of, this, uh, of the scarcity of it. And then you go to your third call to action. And then this is right now approaching the, the very end of your talk. This is when you give your acknowledgement. Thank you for uh, being here today, everybody. I, I appreciate the time that I that I was sharing with you. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, I will be in the uh, I'll be backstage or or front stage or back of the room you know, or whatever if you have questions. And then at this time, that acknowledgement that's when you most likely will uh, call back to the stage the person that uh, that that did your introduction. And then they will usually lead the applause. Yeah, but get Frank. Hey, it's so, so the, these are the parts of a signature talk. There's a lot of information that I just gave to you here. And I, I know there's a lot of information. Um, any questions uh, from either Tori or Frank on any of this? Because we are, we are approaching the last few minutes of, of our time together.